Next, on our weekly series, American Artifacts, we visit the National Gallery of Art to learn about the Shaw Memorial. The sculpture honors Colonel Robert Gould Shaw and the 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry, one of the Civil War's first African-American units. The work specifically commemorates the July 18, 1863 storming of Fort Wagner, in which one-third of the 54th's men and officers were killed or wounded. The exhibit Tell It With Pride seeks to shine a spotlight on the members of the 54th and a group of abolitionists who recruited the regiment. Augusta St. Gaudens began to work on this memorial in 1883, and initially he was going to make it a monument just dedicated to Shaw himself. And if you look at some of the examples we have in the case behind you, you'll see that one of his first um, uh, ideas for the monument was to depict Colonel Robert Gould Shaw on a horse. Um, that kind of depiction is often referred to as the man on the mount. Um, however, Colonel Shaw's family objected to that. They thought such a depiction was too grand a way to show their young son. He was, after all, only 25 years old when he was killed at the Battle of Fort Wagner. And they thought that that kind of depiction was better reserved for generals and not a colonel like Shaw. Moreover, Shaw's family felt that it would be more appropriate to show him with his troops. So St. Gaudens went back to the drawing board, quite literally, um, and came up with this conception um, with the idea of putting Shaw surrounded by his troops. It was truly a revolutionary idea for the time. But even more revolutionary was the way that St. Gaudens depicted the figures. He spent an immense amount of time trying to get all the details in the monument correct. Um, the details of their equipment, their rifles, um, their knapsacks, their bedrolls, uh, their hats, all of their uniforms. He borrowed photographs of Shaw in order to, to render Shaw's face accurately. And if you look at the depictions of the African Americans, you can see that he's very much individualized them. Some are older, some are younger, some have beards, some have thicker facial features, some thinner. And this might suggest to you that he had also perhaps tried to find either surviving members of the 54th Regiment or perhaps even photographs of members of the 54th. But that was not the case. The men who posed for this uh, monument in St. Gaudens' studio were not members of the 54th. He just hired African-American African men who he found um, on the streets of New York to come into his studio and pose for him. And so that gave us the idea to form an exhibition which would try and bring the members of the 54th to life. We sought to find photographs of the actual men of the 54th to bring them out of the shadows, um, as it were. Our original hope was that we might find hundreds of photographs of the soldiers of the 54th. And indeed, there were close to 1,500 men who were members of the 54th Massachusetts Regiment during the two years uh, that it existed. Alas, we were only able to uh, find and borrow 18 photographs of men of the 54th. But that then forced us to think about expanding the exhibition in other, I think, very exciting and meaningful ways, to look at 1863 in a broader way and think about what sparked the formation of the 54th Massachusetts Regiment, to look at the other men and women who helped form it um, and who helped support it um, while it was in action. And that's what we've shown in the other rooms. You've been watching a preview of our weekly half-hour American Artifacts program.
Visit cspan.org slash history for schedule information and to view entire programs online.